Ida Always by Karan Levis and Charles Sant Santosa from Athenium Books for Young Readers, an imprint of Simon & Schuster. This book is inspired by a true story of polar bears at the Central Park Zoo. So, Ida Always. Ida Always by Karan Levis and Charles Santosa, excuse me, Athenium Books. Gus lived in a big park in the middle of an even bigger city. Buildings grew around him and shifted the shape of the sky. Zookeepers poked in and out. Visitors came and went. But every morning, when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out of his cave and spent his day with Ida. Ida was right there, always. When Gus tossed the ball, Ida was there to catch it. And when Gus splashed water, Ida was there to splash him right back. They chased and raced until school bells rang. Then the two friends flopped onto their favorite rock while the city pulsed around them. I wish we could see it, Gus sighed. You don't have to see it, see it to feel it, said Ida. Listen. They heard buses groan, trucks rumble, police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coo. People say, hey, wait, yo, hello. And children laugh. That's the city's heartbeat, said Ida. It's right here with us, always. When the skies grew dark, Gus and Ida waved goodnight and crawled off to their caves. With the subways humming underground, they added their snores to the sound of, the, of their city. Every day was always the same. Until one morning, when keys clicked and shoes clacked, Gus crawled out, but Ida wasn't there. Gus lumbered to Ida's cave. He heard her breathing, coughing, snoring, sleeping. He sat in their sunniest spot and waited. The coffee carts ground their beans and the squirrels squabbled over crumbs. Visitors shuffled in, keepers bustled about. Ida had never slept so late. Snow monkeys and taxi cabs screeched. Ice cream trucks jingled. Still, Ida didn't come. Keeper Sonia came instead. Sonia told Gus that Ida was very sick. Usually there's a way to make a sick bear better, but this time was different. Ida wouldn't hurt, but she would get tired and too weak to play and swim. Then one day, when her body stopped working, Ida would die. Sonia's voice was soft. But the words felt rough to Gus. His insides churned, his chin shook, the sky rumbled. Gus rushed to his friend. Don't go, he growled. Don't go, don't go, don't. Ida growled right back. Together, they stomped and snarled. The growls turned into howls so loud they filled up the zoo, rising higher than the skyscrapers, scaring pigeons, surging towards stars. And then they stopped. The two friends, two friends folded onto one shadow and slumped quietly on the rocks. Two bears snuff, noses sniffled. Two bears' breaths panted. Two bear hearts echoed each other's beat. A plane roared overhead. Gus and Ida wondered where it was going. They wondered where Ida was going too. They wondered and guessed and imagined as they whispered nose to nose. Wherever I go, said Ida, I bet I'll always smell your fishy breath. That made Gus smile. He wasn't sure if he should, but Ida was giggling too. They let their laughs bounce back and forth between them. From then on, Ida spent most days in her cave. She slept a lot, but she didn't hurt. The keepers took good care of her, and Gus helped. He gathered her favorite toys and fishy treats. He brought her visitors' notes. They were growl there were growling days and laughing days, and days that mixed them up. Sometimes Ida needed a moment alone, and sometimes Gus did too. But at, the, but at the end of each day, Gus always told Ida, I'll miss you. And Ida always told Gus, I'll miss you too. They would cuddle until the sky grew dark and the lamps of the city clicked on. They would wave goodnight a thousand times and wave a few more times alone. Then wave a few more times more. Then one sunny day, while Gus smooths her fur, Ida curled into quiet. Her eyes fluttered shut and they didn't open anymore. Gus pressed one last pat into Ida's paw. The paper shared the news, the city cried. For days, the zoo was filled with goodbyes. 
Now when keys click and shoes clack, Gus crawls out of his key, knowing Ida, knowing Ida won't be there. He dives and swims alone, and he eats his lunch with Sonia. They roll Ida's favorite yellow ball. Some days Gus forgets. He looks for Ida on the rock in her cave behind the waterfall. When he remembers she isn't there, he rests in the shadows. But even in the shadows, the sounds of the city reach him. He hears buses groan, trucks rumble, police whistle, taxis honk, pigeons coo, people say, hey, wait, yo, hello, and children laugh. Gus smiles. He steps into the spot where Ida liked to soak in the sun. Gus smiles. He steps into the spot where Ida liked to soak in the sun. He listens to their, to their city pulsing around him. He remembers that Ida said, you don't have to see it to feel it. The sidewalks tap and the streets hum. Gus, Gus's heart beats. And Ida is right there, always. And like I said, this is a fictional story inspired by the pair, a pair of polar bears, Ida and Gus, who live together at the New York City Central Park Zoo. This was Ida Always by Karan Levis and Charles Santosa from Anthony M. Books. Thanks for watching.